So you guys have an algae problem and you came to me for help? I never had algae in my tank. All I have is beautiful corals. Hey, what's up folks? If this is your first time here, my name is Goran and you guys are watching Reef Under The Roof YouTube channel. First thing that you guys have to do in order for you to get rid of algae and in order for you to implement other things we're gonna talk about in this video. And that first thing is, you're gonna have to just pluck out that algae. Either use your fingers or use any of the dental tools so you can remove it. The main thing here is you don't want to introduce that algae back into your system. I've seen lots of different strategies how you can do this. Basically, if you're going to do it manually with your fingers, with your hands, you're going to pull them out, put it somewhere else, and you want to introduce clean hand back in your tank. You can either rinse your hand in the water, put it back in, or use a towel so you can wipe it and then put your hand back in. Or what you can do, you can use the siphon method. What folks will do, will grab a hose and have that siphon going and basically pull the algae with the thumb all the way to the end of the hose. That way, algae is going to get sucked in and you won't introduce it back into your system. I used to have a big bubble algae problem in my big tank. And basically what I did, I would pull all the rocks out from my tank and I start picking that algae out. And of course, I didn't do that in one day. It took a while. I'll pull one rock a day. I'll pluck algae from it and then put it back inside the tank. Tomorrow, I'll pick up one more rock. I'll pull the algae out of it and put it back. And that's the first thing what you're going to do is that manual labor. Try to pick up as much as you can. Second thing, what I want you guys to do is just introduce a lot of herbivores. My favorite fish for dealing with algae problems are yellow tank, either tamini tank or yellow eye coal tank and a fox face, the yellow type. And don't get me wrong, there's lots of other tanks that are beautiful and they'll work out for you, but plenty of them will grow too big too fast, or the mean fish, or they're just egg magnets. As far as other cleanup crew in your tank, three of my favorite are MR crabs. Just be careful if you have small frags or corals that they like to munch on, just move one aside and add them into your tank. So emerald crabs are like choco snails or astrea snails. Those three together with fish you're gonna add to your tank, they're gonna take care of your algae problem in the future. There's few other things that you can do to help you combat that algae. You can purchase the hydrogen peroxide in a spray bottle right off the bat, pick up that rock, take it out of the tank. When you're done plucking all that algae out of the rock, you can spray hydrogen peroxide on it and just let it sit for a few minutes and just rinse it afterwards on whatever bucket you have, whatever you have going on, just rinse it good and put it back into your tank. I used to dip my zoanthid frags with hydrogen peroxide. It basically only takes a few seconds with hydrogen peroxide and it'll destroy all that algae has been on that rocks or the frag plugs. What other thing you can do, especially if you cannot pull those rocks out of your tank, you can drain your tank all the way down. You can grab that bottle and just spray directly on them. If you have a brand new tank and you just turn on your lights, there's few things what you can do so you can get rid of that algae as well. So that brand new white rock that you just introduced into your tank, together with that high part that you have set up, it's gonna fuel that algae to grow like crazy. If you have options to pick up any live rock or the handmade rock that have different coloration on them, since that white rock is gonna pick up the most lighting of any other rocks out there. If you set up the lighting for your SPS corals, that's a huge difference that if you set up that lighting for your softies or for whatever low light corals you have. If you don't have corals in your tank, you can shut that light completely off or you can set them up on that lower part zone and then have them set up acclimation mode over a few months and that way when it ramps all the way up you have way less problems than you used to have in the beginning. And on the other side, if you have established system already and you have corals in it, of course you don't want to mess with your lights. That's not something what you want to do since you can lose your coals real quick and that's not something you want, trust me. Test at minimum twice a week and make sure that your nitrates and phosphates are in the zones that are adequate for growth of our corals. And make sure to raise them where they belong. I like to keep my phosphates at minimum 0.03 and my nitrates at 3. 
except from your testing and doing everything what I just told you, taking care of that algae in your display tank. You're gonna make sure that you have adequate filtration into your tank, look into your sump, see what you have going on. For instance, Refugium helped me a lot of not having algae in my display system. With me setting up an area into my sump where I can grow algae and have strong lights on top of that Refugium, it's gonna make that algae grow in a different spot instead of your display. If you have been overfeeding your tank and not having enough filtration to pick all that up, upgrade all that filtration and just feed less. If you guys have any other algae problems, like for instance, dino or cyano or bubble algae, UV helped me a lot with dino algae, ChemiClean helped me a lot with cyano, and emerald crabs helped me a lot with bubble algae. If you made it so far into this video, please give it a like and check out all my other videos on my channel. If you're gonna implement any of these things that we talked about today, please let me know how it went and just comment down below. Or if you have any other methods that work for you, just feel free to drop them down below. I'm interested in how that went. If you guys haven't checked out my previous video where I talk about top five favorite retail gadgets for controlling your tank, go and check it out and see you guys in the next video. Peace.